Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of The Svelte Way. I am also joined by Amelia yet again, um, <laughs> in a great way. Uh, today's topic uh, is actions and components. Amelia, do you want to give some more background? Yeah, so something that we handle a lot at The Pudding is uh, scrolly telling. So we'll, basically the text is scrolling and a visual is staying put and we want to know what part of the text is visible to then match that and update the visual um, to match whatever the text is saying. So that's a long-winded way to say that um, we had a lot of conversations about the best way to keep an eye on the text to see which was visible. Um, so there's different chunks of text and we'd want to know like, is the first one visible? Is the second one visible? Is the third one visible? Um, so we had two ways of doing this. Um, I started with a component that was just called in view. Um, basically just you wrapped it around whatever content. So like each text chunk and then it would trigger an in view and then Russell came in with an action, um, a little, uh, it um, up. <laughs> yeah, switch up. And um, it was kind of interesting to talk about what are the benefits of an action versus a component. Um, and I think this should generalize to any time that you're thinking about um, like events, I guess, that you want to um, track should you use an action or a component? Yeah. And we're going to be using intersection observer. This, that's kind of like the, the thrust of what's going on behind the scenes. So I guess without further ado, let's jump into it. Um, okay. So a little setup. Um, we're going to start by looking at the action. Um, in here, we are importing our action. So also, if you're not familiar, an action is really just a function in Svelte that is called when a um, DOM element is created, essentially. Um, that's like the gist of it. Um, and so we're starting by importing this function. We separated it out. Um, we're going to have this variable called visible to just toggle on and off when the element is in view or not. And then you can see a little setup here. We have a p tag that um, dynamically um, adds this visible class to on or off. And then just a little text with a conditional text in here to tell us if we're in fact seeing um, the element on the screen or not. Um, so if you see, I scroll right now, it's just gonna say not in view the whole time because we haven't hooked up the action yet. So let's first take a look at the action itself and then we'll hook it up. Um, that's the more complicated one. Let's go with the simple one. Okay, so at its core, you can see it just exports a single function called in view. And by default, it only takes a, uh, the node, the DOM element as the parameter. Um, and we are setting up this function here, which we'll jump over. But basically, if you're not familiar with intersection observer, it takes um, this root property, which we're gonna jump over as well. That's not necessary for now. And this root margin, which defines like the area of its existence. We'll get into that a little bit later, but you can see the default is just zeros across the board. We create this new observer um, and then we tell it when there's an intersection, call this function. And then finally we make it observe that DOM element that was passed in. And then the only thing that actually happens here is when um, the DOM element comes into view or intersects. Um, it calls this function and we are dispatching a custom event called intersect um, and we are passing uh, at this value of intersecting, which is going to be true or false. So in a nutshell, what all that's happening is when an element comes into the viewport, we are dispatching a custom event called intersect with a true or false value. Um, and you can read up on intersection observer. There's a lot more details around it, but this is like the bare bones example. Um, and then, oh, I missed, I forgot to mention the return function. So uh, actions will have this destroy um, 
function. So when it's um, when the DOM element is removed, it just kind of it disconnects the observer. So that's just a little cleanup function. Um, anything else before we actually implement Amelia? Uh, nope, unless you want to go over root and root margin. Uh, we'll come back to that once we actually get this working. How about that? Cool. Um, OK, so we come back to our key tag here. And first thing we have to tell, do is tell it to use the action. So it's um, uh, use in view. And that's it. So we've done the first part and nothing is happening because we're not actually doing anything to the node in our thing here. We could change styling or whatever, but I prefer to do everything on the actual element itself. And because this is an event that is happening um, and we're dispatching events, we have to set up the listener. So now we can say on intersect and do something here. So what we want to do, right, is toggle this visible Boolean. So now if we say do our little event handler, um, I believe it's detail is the property here. Then we can say visible equals detail. Maybe let's not run it off screen. Um, let's see if I got that right. Nice. So you can see I have a visible class here that goes to gold. Um, and so let's actually go through it. Oh, we need some, <laughs> we need some more uh, margin here. So it actually goes off screen maybe. Okay. Um, however, you will notice here that it's always gold because whenever we're in the viewport, right, it's going to be in view. So that makes sense. So um, I mentioned the root margin thing. So we can actually maybe, oh, we have a quick visual to explain this a little bit better. Um, but root margin lets you actually like change where the threshold or where I guess the intersection actually can occur. Um, that's annoying. <laughs> but basically, so if the, let's pretend that that line, right, represents um, the root, you can actually change the margin. And so if you go negative, it's going to be like bringing it in from the viewport. So we can basically like say, wait until it's a hundred pixels from the bottom instead of flush at the bottom for triggering. So this follows CSS property. So top, right, bottom. So if we just do something like negative 300 pixels, um, now when we run this, we should see it. And actually I'm going to go more because I don't know if our video is blocking. Um, You'll see it says it's not in view, and then at some point it triggers in view. There we go. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I guess the next thing to show is any, anything actually else on that, Amelia, on the, the component. Or sorry, on the action before we jump over to the component. Custom actions are really nice because you can just write the um, logic in one. JavaScript function and then just pull it in using use um, and then on if you have a custom event um, pretty much anywhere, which yep. do it once, use it many times, pretty great. Yeah, so like this is a very simple use case and we abstracted it and um, I actually have just another one that I was going to show, um, which does the same thing, but actually lets you pass in some parameters. So instead of me manually changing those margins, you can actually just pass it in as a parameter. Um, and now this has become like a very robust viewport detection uh, function that you can use on any element. So um, in this case, it would have looked like this, uh, um, whatever, 300 or negative 300. So that's, that's how I usually use it. Um, but that's, I guess, good for now, because let's jump over to the component version. Uh, I need to comment out that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, notice we have the capital I, because that is, I don't, is that just a spell convention to always use capitals with um, components? I think it, it's the same way in React and probably you. It's just like 
Um, this is a custom component as opposed to a natural DOM element. Uh, okay. So now, again, we start with the same baseline here. Um, let's go and. I think uh, first thing. Your, your import actually needs a, that capital we were talking about. Oh, it has it. The from in view that's felt. <gasps> Completely <laughs> incorrect. Good thing we didn't try to actually use it. Okay. So um, first thing we need to do is actually create our component. And you'll see we are wrapping the uh, DOM element here inside of this component. Um, and what we're doing, actually, we'll just jump over to the actual component so we can see what's happening. Um, dot felt. Um, so let's actually start with the DOM. So you can see we're using a slot. And so anything that we want to put over um, is being slotted in here um, inside this div. So Amelia, I know this was your, your baby. So I'll let you talk through some of the, the thought process behind doing it this way. Yeah, so um, just to reiterate in different words. So with this slot, it, whenever we use the in view component, whatever we wrap inside of it um, is going to show up on the page, but it's going to have a, a container div, basically. So that paragraph tab, tag is going to sit right inside that div that we've created in the in view component. Yep. And so the difference, obviously, one difference here is we can have like a bunch of different DOM elements and it's going to trigger when all of them, right, are intersecting or like when the whole lot of it rather than just one yeah. one piece. So that's one difference from the jump. Um, right. So the, the other logic is here in here is basically the same as we had in our action. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever the component mounts, we're creating that intersection of our observer on that outer div that we've created within this component, as opposed to um, something that was created wherever we're instantiating it, like we're doing with the action. Um, and then it has an internal is visible property um, set to false initially. And then we're passing that is visible prop down to the slot. So um, this is kind of cool. That took me, it took me a while to figure out that this was possible. So if we go back to the root, um, we can use the syntax let um, and then the property name, which is is visible. Um, so now we have access to that is visible um, property. And if we wanted to rename it, we could just do like equals um, and then um, like use visible, which we have up top. And then down here, we could do the same as we had before with the um, class visible. It's going to do this. So I think one of the um, equals is. First, yay. I don't know why I get so excited when things work. <laughs> um, and then also let me change this to is visible. There we go. So in view, not in view. Um, a big difference, right, between these two is that this is actually, this is visible is inherently scoped to this section right here, right? So you can't use is visible anywhere else. Um, which makes it really easy, right? Because now we can just use it and on the class, whereas um, with the action, right? We had to have it defined up here. So there is a little, there's a couple more moving parts. Um, so yeah. that's one nice thing. So, um, so now that we know how to use an action and a component, um, the benefits with using a component are like one, you have that scoped variable. So if you have which I'll often do, um, like with scrolly tilling, I'll have an each block where I'm repeating a bunch of sections. Um, I can have that scoped is visible property within each of those sections without creating um, new components that have that property. Um, so it's just a little bit easier if you're doing something like this, um, where you don't need to define that variable within the script of this component. So in theory, I just did what you're describing. So yep. component one, component two, yes, nice. <laughs> and component three. So that was like super easy, right? We didn't have to change anything except for add an iteration over um, a few sections. 
Yeah. Um, Whereas if you wanted to do this with the action, you would have to um, either create subcomponents that had like a visible prop, or you could have an array of uh, like let visible be an array of trues or falses, and then you could index into that array um, when you're. Let me, so let's see. So if we had each sections as I, and let's close that loop. Um, basically here, instead of visible equals detail, you could just change it to visible I equals detail. And then wherever we're checking for that thing, we say visible of I is equal, or I guess just visible of I is Boolean. Um, and same thing here. Um, let's comment out this other one. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. And well, I didn't give them numbers, but same thing again, a little bit more setup. Um, so that I mean, this wouldn't scale well if there was a lot of more like a more complication in this code, like that would start to get messy. Um, so I think Amelia, you already referenced like you, we would create usually we would create another component and we'd just that component would just have the single um, visible Boolean and we'd Basically, it ends up kind of being the same thing, right? Where you have like um, in view of components, right? We, I guess it would be like a scrolly text mm -hmm. and inside. And so we'd loop through and create a bunch of scrolly texts. And then those could just be uh, handled like we did it before. So that's usually my preference rather than trying to complicate it like this. Um, yeah, I feel like um, encouraging more components is probably a good thing as well. Um, I generally like end up with really long components and then they'll be just much more readable if they're broken out and easier to debug. So um, yep. it's not so bad to have yep. to um, And then the other thing I would say that um, kind of uh, thinking about the pros and cons of each, I think I mentioned earlier that the nice thing about the action is it's very um, abstractable. So I usually think about using the action if it's something that I want like to work on any DOM element and it's a little more abstracted in that sense. I also, with this scenario where we have an event firing, I do like the semantically, the semantic nature of an event. Um, so that's like another plus for actions. And then aside from the ease of use, I think for um, looping for this component, I think we found that it's nice when you have access to um, JS styles and DOM elements when it gets more complicated, right? So if this component is doing anything more than just like flipping on and off, and there's a lot of other visible visual things happening, it's way nicer to deal with that um, in a spell component than just in JavaScript land. So <laughs> you could do that all right on doing JavaScript on like the node itself in the action, but that gets a little messier and is just not as, I mean, it's not the, the right way to do it if you can do it with like normal style elements and um, whatnot. So I think that would be yeah. another case for using the component. Yeah, you also get more control. Like if you didn't want the action to be on any kind of element, say you wanted it to be like on a div or on a figure or on a paragraph specifically, um, you would have that kind of control with the component, whereas with an action, people can just throw it on anywhere, um, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I feel like that's the conclusion. If you want it to be more reusable, I'd probably end up going with uh, an action if you want it to be a little more custom or uh, tailored to your needs, I would probably go with the component. I love them both though. So that's my <laughs> last word. Do you have a last word, Amelia? Um, uh, took it right out of mouth. You can't choose <laughs> your child. Not that these are our children, but they're both great. Awesome. All right. I think this was our shortest one yet. That was the goal. Hopefully also it was jam packed with uh, interesting information. As always, comments, rebuttals, other ways to do this. That's actually what I'm most excited about. If you have other methods, um, let us know. And otherwise, Thank you for watching. Until next time.